Ozzy Jurek joins me on the line right now. Ozzy, I was just thinking, this kind of weather, you know, British Columbia, especially out in the West Coast where you are, has been experiencing this gorgeous weather the last few weeks. And you know what I always find? It gets people talking about, hey, I want to buy one of these vacation properties on one of the islands. I've heard a couple of people chat about it recently on the ferries out there. And I thought, you know what? We better give a little do's and don't list for those kind of people before they take the plunge. So what about it? Uh, you know, I, I'm thinking about buying a place on an island. What should I be thinking about? Yeah, no question about it, Mike. I'm right now in Secret Cove Marina, the great marina, by the way. And people are leaving from all areas to head for the island. And the husband and wife are laying on the beach. And all of a sudden she says, hey, this is so great. Why don't we go buy something? At that point, I advise people to get a sharp stick and poke yourself in the eye because quite <laughs> often that's less painful than buying that property because people don't sit down and say, how will I use the property? Is it for retirement? Um, is it kids? Uh, is it a weekend retreat? And they don't ask, how long did it take me to get here? For instance, if you're sitting on Texada Island and ask yourself that question, well, there's three ferries to get there. It's a full travel day. So if I say, well, I want a weekend retreat, well, really, you know, how far are you? How much time do you want to spend traveling? Or if there is a ferry, how often does it go? Is it a car ferry or is it like kids or is it sort of passengers only? So you have to ask yourself some questions that go beyond just a, a normal property that you would be buying. Well, you know the other one I found, because as you say, a lot of people think about a property and they think, oh, it would be lovely to spend months there when I'm retired. But one of the, this is just an anecdotal experience, but I found that they didn't check out whether, you know, a lot of times as you get older, and we know this from every fact and stat we get, people need health care more often. Uh, something might come up. They need doctors. And I've known a lot of people who've actually bought a property, were forced to sell as, they, as their needs for health care increased i mean they didn't have proximity they couldn't take that ferry back same for any vacation property and and that's another kind of criteria that people have got to be aware of yeah and it's more important like you say because you're on an island and you have to realize that i mean quite often sometimes buy a property and saying oh i have my own boat i can go there but if i'm not healthy or if i had a heart attack right you have to ask yourself the questions. Now, quite a few islands, of course, fit all the criteria. For instance, you take Bowen Island, you have a ferry almost every single hour. It's part of the West Vancouver municipality. It has health services, it has schools and so on. So th that island would be perfect for somebody that, that wants to, uh, to have access to, to all the facilities. And other islands, of course, are, are beautiful too, but uh, so often people buy a vacant lot. Uh, is there septic tank approval? Uh, is there well water? And sometimes people say, yeah, there's well water, but is there enough to be beyond brushing my teeth, right, if that's mm -hmm. all there is uh, in terms of the well? So you have to see, yeah, buy a property on the ocean. You have a 100-foot set setback before you can build. You want to build a dock? Well, you likely can't. And so ask the questions. Get a quality realtor. Uh, that understands uh, not just the particular property, but the regulations and the rules. My goodness, we have Island Trust out there that is sort of a, a quasi-government uh, police force that will make you do things uh, that you don't want to do or don't let you do things that you want to do. I don't want to get myself started on this, Ozzy, but here's another one that uh, you should check out what costs are. I mean, I am still, I mean, this is what, you know, filed under governments can do anything, and you just reminded me of it. To, I can't believe that people in some of those islands have a tax bill from the municipality, the closest municipality, but they get no services. A friend of mine pays uh, 2200 bucks a year on an island that doesn't even have a road. You know, let alone any other yeah. service. Zero, I mean, zero services. I find it just outrageous. But that's something else to check out. Oh, no question. And particularly when you dig into uh, some of the islands, uh, I don't want to knock anybody, but the island trust has sort of uh, been created when there was a, a nearly really development. Today, uh, there are sort of three representatives uh, on an island. Uh, two are local and one is foreign. And if they have been in their bonnet, there's absolutely nothing that can be done. I mean, it, uh, some islands mm. fight for weekly rentals. Some islands f fight for uh, amenities increase. And it's just you no, know, no, no, no. And so really be understanding that this is not a normal purchase. You've got to understand a little bit more and do more digging. Well, there you go. Uh, very quickly, you have a hot property for us. 
Ja, Kimberley, three-bedroom house plus a detached one-bedroom suite, two baths, about 2,400 square feet in total. It's an older house, close to downtown, $227,000, a bargain. And who doesn't say there's affordable housing? Ozzy Jerk, you go out, enjoy the people at Secret Cove, enjoy your boating, and uh, just a major thanks, as I always do to you, for not golfing this weekend. Have a great weekend.